Good morning. Let's uh, start the lecture. Okay, I'm going to talk about uh, reduced order, uh, reduced order observer, right? So in the last lecture, what we learned is a full order observer, and um, so now let's consider reduced order observer. So first, consider the discrete model. Okay, so a full order observer basically what you design is you can you what you what you assume you assume you don't have measurement for uh, any one of the state variables, right? And you design your all, uh, all observer to observe uh, all of the state variables. Okay, <coughs> but <coughs> in practice, I mean you do have sensors. You do have a sensor to measure certain uh, state variable, variables basically. So those are obtainable. So uh, you for the x of k at here, right? So some of them, right? They are measurable ones, and then there is this unmeasurable ones. Okay. Right. So you so for these ones you have sensors, right? And these ones you don't. So then what we really want is maybe, you know, instead of a design a full order observer, maybe for the measurable ones, right? You know, we don't we don't have to observe it or estimate anymore cuz you you have the exact uh, sensory uh, output here, right? So we we just have to design an observer for those unmeasurable ones. Okay? Yeah. So then the observer that you design will become the so-called reduced order observer because the number of unmeasurable ones, right, is less than n, right? So if this is a, a n by one, so then this is definitely going to be less than n. Okay? Yeah. So let's say <coughs> uh, what we can do is let's see how uh, we look at the output. If the output is this y of k equal to c, suppose that this is zero, it's just a c x of k here, okay? Just like this. So let's say if you have m number of sensors, okay? If you have an m number of sensors, so you can measure uh, total m number out of this one here, okay? So then this is going to be n minus m, right? For this unmeasurable ones here. Yeah, so apparently you can see what is the, what is the number of a sensor here? So this one here, c x of k. You can consider the c, right? What the c at here does is basically you're taking out those measurable quantities at here. Okay? Yeah. So the c is basically sort of a selection matrix, but it's you're taking out the measurable quantity. So <coughs> then the c matrix. Well, basically, is m by n size, right? Yeah. So m by n and time n by one give you m by one. So this y of k here, <coughs> those are sensor outputs, basically. Consider. Okay. Yeah. So now let's look at the the uh, exact uh, uh, way of uh, modeling the reduced order here, but. <coughs> the first step we do is we need to partition this x of k, okay? We need to partition that x k into a new order because we know x of k, there's a measurable one, there's an unmeasurable one, and we wanted to basically regroup them into this measurable group and unmeasurable group, okay? Yeah. So what we do is like this, okay? So we partition or you can call it a regroup. Okay, x of k okay, into this okay, measurable and unmeasurable. Okay, yeah. So let's see. Now, how does that look like now? 
Okay, so basically, then what I what I'll do is, okay, we'll define a new state variables. Okay, so we define let's say a new state variable w of k. And for the variable quantity, I'll call it x of k. And for unmerable quantity, I'll call it x b of k. Okay? Yeah. All right. So apparently, x of k, right? The size of x of k, x a of k, okay? Size of x of k is what? You have m a number of a variable, right? So the size should be m by one, okay? And the size of this unmerable quantity is n minus m by one, right? See so unmerable quantity like this. <coughs> Is that good? Yeah. Okay. So then, so basically, you got to you got to understand is uh, W of k here. Okay, it's nothing different from from original x of k except that you are reordering. Right, the order is different now. Okay, so it's not x one, x two, x three anymore. Right, maybe it's starting from x two. Right, because x two is probably the variable one. So then. The state equation, okay, the state equation will become this one now. So instead of a state equation will become W of k plus one and x a k plus one and x b k plus one, okay, and then equal to a system matrix time x a x b and then time another system matrix u of k okay state equation so the question here is right this matrix is not going to be the same as original system matrix okay so original system matrix is g right so right now what we're going to do is we're we're grouping it we're partitioning it here so i'm going to call this as g a a I'm gonna call this portion as a GAB. Basically, we look at the block of the matrix that are here. Okay, so this part associated with this AA here, like this, and this is HA and this is HB. Okay, so the state equation will become a new one like this. Okay, so I'll show you how do you derive this part here. Okay, how do you derive this? Okay, so let's let's look at this one here. Okay, first of all, look at this. So W of k, right? The new state variable is actually just you're not defining. You are actually not defining new state variable. You're just reordering the state variables here, right? Yeah. So then this W of k here, right, must be as related okay, to the original x of k by a matrix P. So this matrix P is going to be, you know, all the zeros and ones actually. Okay, it depends on how you reorder the x of k here. So for example, right? I'll show you an example right after this one here. Okay, yeah. So for example, uh, let's say I had, uh, let's say example for example, if I have x of k, which probably is x1 of k, x2 of k, x3 of k. So there are three state variables, okay, three state variables. So, and then I said, okay, uh, x2 of k, right, is measurable. Okay, yeah. If x2 of k is measurable, then, so what we see is, we like uh, the way we, re we are uh, grouping or reorder, so we put the first one, right, this xa is a measurable quantity, and the xb is those unmeasurable quantities, right? So then my w of k will be x2 of k, x1 of k, and x3 of k, okay? That makes sense? 
Yeah, so I put the first is measurable and then the second, the last two is not measurable. Clear? And we're looking for basically x1 and x2 and x3. So we, there has to be a matrix set here that relates this new state vector with the original state ve uh, vector here. Does that make sense, right? So, when you look at this matrix here, so what should I put this matrix in here? This is x2. How do I put, how, how can I, so the first row times this column gave me x2, right? So what should I put as first row here? Yeah. The second row? Yeah, so for people learn robotics, you look at this matrix here. What's this matrix? <laughs> Scary <laughs> matrix, <laughs> rotation matrix, right? Yeah, because if you uh, look at the matrix set here, uh, each column has a unit length, and uh, you, when you multiply, when you do a dot product of each column, right, they're all zero. Okay, so this is rotation matrix here. Okay, yeah. So your uh, new state variable okay, is related to the old one by this capital P. Okay. Okay, so then what would be this new state equation look like now, right? New state equation here. So this is how you can approach here now. So new state equation. So based on this uh, W equal to X of K, and then apparently, so this is my capital P matrix. Okay. Then X of K vector will be the P inverse okay, W of K, right? P inverse W of K. So your uh, your state equation, original state equation is this. Okay. So x of k plus one, this will be p inverse w x of k plus one, right? Yeah. And x of k will be p inverse w k. So you do that. To, you basically you do that to substitution in here. So p inverse w k plus one, and equal g times p inverse w of k and plus h u of k. Okay? Yeah. So actually this should, sh this should re remind you something out of here. Uh, what, where, where, where do you see this uh, thing in the previous lecture? This is, this is uh, basically what? Which lecture we cover this content here? Yeah, similarity transformation, right? Yeah. So this is basically a type of similarity transformation, except that we're not diagonal, uh, diagonalizing it, or we are not, uh, you know, converting it into a control canonical or observable canonical here, right? Yeah, we're just uh, converting into mm -hmm. something else. But anyway, so you look at this one here. You take the uh, inverse here. You multiply it to this side. Okay, so this is your this is basically the new state equation. Okay, the new state equation here, and this guy here, here PGP inverse. The PGP inverse should give us this matrix here. Okay, so it should give us this matrix. So let's say. Uh, if I based on this example here, okay, based on this example, and uh, what would be this uh, PG P inverse? Okay, maybe uh, first is this PH at here. So let's uh, suppose that, okay, suppose uh, we'll do a little assumption in here. Uh, let's assume, just in generic, let's just assume your, your G matrix, your original G matrix is G11, G12, G13, you know, like this, okay? And your original H matrix is H1, H2, and H3. Is that good? Yeah? So, what we're looking for is, we're looking for is, 
um, x1, no, uh, no x1 anymore. This is what we're looking for. This is x2 of k plus 1, x1, k plus 1, x3, uh, k plus 1. Right? Okay. And uh, here, x1 of k, x2, uh, sorry, x2, x1, and x3. That make sense? Yeah? So this is a new state equation, right? But you need to figure out what's PG, P inverse here, and the pH. So let's figure out pH, maybe. What is the P? P is this guy here, right? P is this. So you use this matrix times this H head here. So P is 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. So this guy times H, what should I give you? This times this column, H2, right? And this times this column, H1 and H3. So bear in mind, right, you're not picking new state variables, you're just reordering the state variables here. So which means what? Which means, you know, if you expand this whole metri whole uh, equation right here, you get three basically equations, right? The three equations in terms of x1 of k plus 1, x2 k plus 1, x3 of k plus 1. And they should be the same as the original one, basically. Okay? If your original one, you look at the original one here, you know, the original one is, uh, is this. So x1 associated with h1 times u. So you should still, afterwards, you still you should still have the same basic relationship, right? Yeah. So this one right here, you can try PGP inverse, okay, to uh, try it out here. So what you're going to end up with, okay, G22, G21, G23, okay, and G12, G11, and G13 here is G31, G32, and G33. Okay, yeah. So you can let's see if uh, if I'm gonna pick one row right here to test it. See if that that's gonna be the right one out, right? Let's pick the first row here. So what does the first row give us? X two of k plus one equal to g two two times x two plus g two one times x one plus g two three times x three, right? Is this the same as the regional state equation. What's the regional state equation? The regional state equation is this, right? Is this. If you think about x2 of k plus 1, it looks different, but if you, if you move this term, switch with this term here, you get exactly the same as before, right? Yeah. So basically, this is how you can verify huh, if you um, if you don't are not too sure if you get the right one or not. And the other quick thing is you can do this is a p inverse, so you might think it is too much. This is oh, Bob, this is a three by three. Do an inverse, but this is a rotation matrix, so you don't need to do an inverse. This, this you can do a what? You can do a transpose at here. So this p inverse is the same as b tra p transpose. Okay. As a matter of fact, for this case, the P inverse P transpose end up the same as P. Okay? Yeah. For this case. So. Mm-hmm. Oh yes, you're right. Good point.
Excellent. Good. Okay. So this is the new state equation now, right? This new state equation. Uh, if I if I look at this new state equation, this one here, okay. So let's say uh, I'm actually partitioning, right? So basically, we're partitioning into G A A, G A B, G B A, and G B B. Okay. So if I compare to the current example right here. So let's say what will be the GAA? What will be GAB? What will be GBA? And what will be the GBB? Right? Based on this matrix here. Okay? Based on this matrix. Okay, so first of all, you look at this partitioning here. This GAA is associated when you when you use the matrix block here to do the multiplication. So this block times this guy here, right? Times this. And this A, X of A, has M number of uh, measurable quantity. So this is going to be a square matrix here. So this is going to be M by M size. Okay. So this GAA is going to be M by M. Okay. So, and this GAB is going to be the one multiplied by this guy here. Okay. So that's going to be an m by okay n minus m so then you multiply this is size is n minus m times one so all together right you multiply this is get m size over there was that right um, so the total column is uh, n size, right? It's n by one. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, this is m by m by. So the this times this should be the same dimension as x of a here, right? And x of a is the dimension m by one. Okay. Yeah. So this is good. And then GBA, the size this times that. This this should be n by n minus m now. A minus n times the size of m, as uh, size of x of a of k, which is m. And this GBB is n minus m size, and then and then time n minus m. Okay, so that's the generic dimension for the G matrix, the four blocks that are here, right? For the block, four blocks. So let's say for for the current example here. For the current example, the m equal to 1, and then this is n minus m is going to be 2, right? So for the current example, so m equal to 1, and n minus m is 2. And so which means what? If this is the matrix here, how do I partition it? So we're going to partition that basically like this, right? So your GAA is actually just G22, right? And this GAB is this guy. GBA is this, GBB is this. Does that make sense? Yeah? So the proper partitioning, okay? This, it's, this, is, this is the first step uh, before uh, you implement this uh, reduced order observer. Okay, that has to be done properly. Okay. Okay. So let's move on here now. Let's look at now how do we design uh, this uh, uh, the, uh, the the state uh, reduced order observer here. Okay. Yeah. 
So now what we look at is, let's look at uh, the measured portion of state. So let's look at the equation for this measurable measurable portion, which is the x a at here. Okay, so here is this equation, right? This is the equation here. This is a measurable portion. What does x of a of k plus 1 equal to? Equal to this times this plus this times this, and then plus this times this, right? Yeah, so okay. x of a plus 1 equal to gaa xa plus G A B X B and plus H A U of K. Okay, so that's the equation for the measurable portion. Okay. Now I'm gonna do a little bit uh, uh, change it here. Measurable portion means you know it's known, right? So if you look at this expression here, what's known, what's unknown? GAA is a system matrix, so you know that. And X of A, that's the measurable portion, right? You know that. HA, this is the system, you know this. And U is your control, and that's <coughs> also something that you will know, right? So basically these two terms, this known, and this is known here. And this is known in here. So let's move all the known term to one side. Okay. So basically, okay. So we do this. So x of b of k is the unmeasurable quantity, and x b of k is what you're going to estimate. Okay. So your observer is going to be redesigned specifically for this x b only, right? You know, your design, your observer is going not is not going to concern uh, to too concern about this x of k because they are coming from the sensor, right? Okay, okay. So the whole basically. The whole uh, left side here is a known term, right? It's a known term. Now let's look at the equation for this unmeasurable. Okay, so for the unmeasurable portion. Okay, so that x b of k plus one. What's x b of k plus one? That's g b a. X a of k and plus GBB XB of K and plus HB U of K. So this is all measurable quantity and this is the equation for that okay based on based on this partitioned new state equation, right? So this equal to this times this plus this times this plus HB times this. Okay. Okay. So let's do a similar uh, procedure at uh, here. Okay. XA is known. HB is known. So we're going to rewrite this as this order okay so nothing changed just rewrite separate you know the knowns from the unknowns Is that good? 
Yeah. Okay. So <coughs> now let's look at this e these two equations, right? So this equation, let's call this is equation maybe uh, number one, and this is equation number two. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, maybe the best way is okay uh, to. Uh, <coughs> The best way is to compare. Now, um, what I want you to compare is for the equation number one. Okay, equation number one. Let's compare the equation with the original output equation. Okay. So remember the original output equation is y of k equal to cx of k. And this one here, the equation number two, let's compare that with this one, the original state equation. Okay, so do a little bit of comparison between these two here. So you see, the red one, right? What's the red one? This is the red one is the original system, right? It's the original system here. And the blue one, which is equation one and the two, and this is the equation derived based on the partitioning, right? From the knowns and unknowns here. So there are similarities, right? You see. What's the similarity? Basically, maybe this whole chunk, right, is like this y of k here. And this gab is like the c at here, right? And xb is this x. Because why? Because, you know, if you recall that, how did you design your full order observer? You design your full order observer based on what? Based on these two red ones, right? Okay. And now you're not designing the full order observer. You're designing reduced order. And uh, you're supposed to use this reduced order to observe which quantity? XB here. And just like the full order, the full order is designed to observe which quantity? The X. See what I'm saying, right? So what is the full order observer? Full order observer is x hat k plus one and equal to g minus l c x hat k and plus h u of k and plus l okay, y of k. That's the full order observer that you, uh, you we designed from the previous lecture. Okay. So then. If I use a little bit of energy at it here, okay, a lot of energy. So let, let's see, consider if I consider this whole left side is a y of k. Consider this gab is a c. Consider xb is the x. And over here, consider the gbb is this g. And consider this whole bracket is the h, h u k. So then. What are we doing now? We're we're designing what X B, right? We're designing a reduced observer for X B. So we're trying to obtain a relationship for X B hat. That makes sense. So now you look at this one here. All we all we need to do is actually just replace this G with G B B. Replace this uh, C with what? the GAB and replace this HUK with this bracket and replace the L we don't replace anything in here so the L can just uh, uh, stay with it is but we're 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 gonna call it a different name okay because the L is uh, the full order observer gain so now we have a reduced order 
observer gain now. That make sense? Yeah? So basically this is what happens now. Right? You do a you do a comparison and a here, right? Uh, here is a full order. And here is the reduced order. So for full order, what you have is x hat. Uh, reduced is x hat b. And then for full order, you have this matrix G. Then for the reduced order, you have GBB. For full order, you have HU here. And for reduced order, you have this quantity, right? You have this one right here. So GBB, G, sorry, not G, GBA, XA, and plus HB, and U. For full order, you have y, the output y, and for reduced order, you have a the, the big term. Okay, for full order, you have the C. Okay. And for the reduced, you have this GAB. Okay? Yeah. And for full order, your observer gain is L. And now we're going to replace that with a new name. Let's call it KE, reduced order observer gain. Okay? So, now you look at the full order, th it's the L time the output, right? L times L output. And the dimension from L times output should be the same dimension as the X hat. Let's see if you have M number of output. Then the L should be what? And dimension in here is A. If you have M number outputs, then the L should be N times M, right? N times M. So what will be the size for the reduced order observer? So the reduced order observer, this is not going to be X hat anymore, this is going to be the X B hat, right? The size for the XB is how much? Let's say you, if you have a M number output, which basically means you have M number of uh, known quantities. Okay. So this is actually going to be N minus M times M. Okay, N minus M times M, because XB, right? is the n minus the m knowns, the total minus the known quantity. So the size for the xb is n minus m. Was that good? So this is what you can do for replacement, okay, for replacement. If you do a replacement, after you re do the replacement, then we end up with xb XB hat equal to GBB minus KE a GAB X hat okay so this is a relatively long expression now. After you do a replacement. Okay. Okay, let's call the equation number three. We got our new estimation equation. 
Okay, but this is not a final form yet. Okay, not a final form. So for this equation in here, uh, there is uh, x uh, a at here, right? There's x a hat, these two, and there's x a k plus one. So x a is a measurable quantity. So as a matter of fact, okay, so we can actually basically see that this is output y of k here, right? That's our x a of k, okay? Because this y of k equal to c times x of k which give us this measurable quantity. Then for the equation number three, let's replace this with y of k, and replace this with y of k, and replace this with y of k plus one. Okay. And after replacement, you can do a little bit of sorting, uh, sorting things at here, basically to expand the whole term. Okay. And sort to sort it a little bit uh, here, okay? So after the sorting, uh, and uh, you what you're gonna get is x b k plus one equal this one is stay the same. And then for the rest of the term, we can group, okay, uh, all the similar terms at here, okay? Group the similar terms. And there's nothing similar for this quantity. But there are uh, same ter similar terms for y of k at here, right? So GBA minus KE times GAA, then y of k. And then this HB minus K E time H A and U of K. Okay? So that's what you get after sorting. Okay. So if you look at this equation, what's actually a little bit uh, uh, not so inconvenient, not so convenient is uh, on the left side and th this is x hat, right? On the left side, you have k plus 1. And then on the right side, you have another k plus 1 here, right? You get another k plus 1. So uh, that generally is something that you wanted to avoid here. So let's now let's do this, right? In terms of solving, basically programming, you know, you have both sides as k plus 1 there. So let's move this term, right, to the... Um, left side okay to the left side and then at the same time okay what we're gonna do is okay we're gonna do this we will going to plus and minus at the same time okay plus minus a new term for um, not changing it, right? Just trying to manipulate the term, the equation in here. So, for this one here, we're going to plus minus a new term. This one. Okay? And there's no this. Just this. So moving this to the left, at the same time you have a plus minus of this. So then what would that what would that uh, give us now? Uh, just a second here, okay? Yeah. So then what's going to be is, okay, for this one that is here. The reason we do this is actually basically is it's this reason here. 
uh, actually I should I should have uh, yeah that should be that should be a term here sorry there should be this ke and times y of k here okay it should be here <coughs> it should be here because why because what I wanted to do is it's this so this is GBB minus KE, GEB is the same coefficient as this guy here, right? It's the same coefficient. And then I'll use the minus, combine this term with the minus this term. So what's that going to be now? So GBB, take out the common term. Inside the bracket is XB, XB hat, minus this quantity okay minus this quantity can you see that hmm? this quantity minus this quantity why 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 is that because you see what's on the left side it's this quantity this is a plus minus plus so now I have this this guy and this guy here okay so that both left and the right now are, in, are consistent now, okay? Yeah. So one is the k plus one moment, and this is the k moment. Okay. And the rest of them, you can you can do a, a similar grouping, okay? Uh, you have another plus term in here, right? You have another plus term. So then you would, uh, you know, do something with this, this, and the plus term, okay? So what you're going to end up with uh, is this. And this term is the plus term. Right? It's the plus term. Uh, Well, actually, I, I, I would just basically probably just write it down, write, write it out here. Okay, I'll just write it out here. So basically, group this. You have this common factor, y of k. So group these two term. Okay, group these two term. So that plus the g b a minus k e and g a a. And these two together, it's associated with the y of k. And the last one here is this guy. OK. Was that good? Yeah, so that seems to be a, a little bit redundant, but you will see the reason here, OK? So now let's define x b hat minus k e y of k. Okay, let's define this guy here. Okay, define this, and we know that y of k is basically x a of k. Let's define this as a new variable. Let's call this eta hat, okay? So define this as this. Then this long equation over here, okay? This long equation. So for the for the left side here, what was it? This is eta k plus one, right? And this is eta hat k. So then this equation becomes k plus 1 equal gbb minus ke gab okay eta hat and plus the rest of the term plus this 
rest the term at here. Copy property. Eh? <coughs> Which one? Well, anyway, <laughs> you know what I'm going to put it here, right? So basically this portion. Is that good? Okay. So you get it. Basically now this is your ob new observer. Okay. So you see based on this one here, you look at the left and the right, right? The left is the pure k plus one moment, and the right is all about the k moment. Okay? Yeah, so that's the idea. But you got also you got to bear in mind is right. Um, what what are we are what are we doing here? Ultimately, what we want is okay. Ultimately, we want the estimation error to go to zero. Okay, so we want this estimate er, estimation error. What's estimation error? It's the actual one minus x v hat. Right, that's the estimation error. But does does this guy here right this this one give us this estimation error and will it can make it go to zero okay so that's the basically the idea okay so let's say how can I get this this guy here now if you look at the definition right this eta hat is x b hat minus k e x a of k right it's this Okay, so if I if I define this slightly uh, different, this get rid of this eta hat. If it's just a pure okay, vector, so what would that be now? That's x b k minus k e x a k, right? It's like x vector or x hat vector. So if you use this minus this, use this minus this, what does that give you? This minus this is this quantity minus this quantity. That's exactly xb minus xb hat. Right? That's exactly this minus this and equal xb minus xb hat. So basically, uh, the observation equation at a here, or the estimation equation, it's a good okay, representation, okay, uh, not the, not a direct representation for the est for the error, okay, but it's related, okay, but it's related here, okay, yeah. Okay, so now let's look at uh, what's the error equation, okay, what's the estimation error equation. To obtain the estimation error equation, what we do is we do this, right? We do we uh, we look at the x b of k plus one minus x b hat. We look at what does this give us. Ultimately, what we're interested in is maybe it it's gonna give me it's gonna give me something like this. And then, and there's something in front of this this guy here. You know what I'm saying, right? Yeah. So then we can see. Oh, look. This error equal to this, and with there's something at here, right? Yeah. And then this quantity that you know, just like a full order, 
we want error go to zero. So that means we want this matrix to have eigenvalues to be within unit circle, right? That's the that's the point here, right? Yeah. So how can I get? So basically, what's x b of k plus one minus x b hat k plus one at here, right? Okay. So x b of k plus one. Where is x b of k plus one? x b of k plus one is actually where? It's this. This is x b of k plus one here, right? Okay. And what about x b hat k plus one, which is this? Okay, which is this. So I can use the equation number two minus equation number three. So for this one and here, so we can use our equation number two and minus equation number three. Okay, so if you do this, you will be able to get okay, a results like this guy here. Okay, results like this. Okay. And the result that here is actually turned out to be GBB minus KE and GAB. Okay, that's what the result is going to be. GBB minus KE minus GAB. So error equal to this minus this times E of K. Okay. What's the size of the error? Right, the a minus one, right? Okay, it's a minus one. So, what makes this error go to zero? The eigenvalue of the matrix needs to be within unit circle. G A G B B G A B are the system matrix, you know, part of the system matrix. You can't change that. So the only manipulation you can do is to d to select a proper KE value, right? And KE is the reduced order observer gain. Okay? This is very much like the full order. What is the full order one? Full order is what? G minus L C, right? G minus L C. So how do we pick the L then? Remember the L is picked by Ackerman formula. So same thing for the KE. So we can we can pick our KE using Ackerman formula. The KE, okay, going to be this quantity. I guess I, I, I'm, uh, I'm going to use a specific, uh, uh, specific example here, probably. So let's see. Uh, consider, consider we have this m equal to one. M equal to one basically means it's a scalar output, single output or there's only one measurable quantity, okay? So if this is m equal to one, that means y of k is scalar, okay? Y is k scalar. Or x a of k, right, is scalar, okay? It's a scalar here. Then for the Ackerman formula at here, okay. What you do is you basically
this is not all the way okay this is not all the way up to a minus one the re for full order observer this is up to a minus one here okay for full order observer but because now it's reduced order and because m equal to one so this is actually become n minus two okay so n minus two here and this phi e here right this phi this phi of a GBB okay this phi is basically is it's uh, uh, let's call it uh, maybe a Z okay and that's the characteristic equation okay of this okay uh, observer loop okay the phi Z is this guy right so this is the system matrix here and phi Z is this then you replace once you once you get this you replace the GBB over here so this guy is the it's gonna be the so-called desired right this is your gonna be the desired okay uh, characteristic equation okay for observer so basically you you user you, you need to give you you say okay here here's the pole location for my reduced observer, right? Okay, and once you determine the pole location, you will have the desired uh, characteristic equation for the observer. Is that good? Yeah. Okay. And this guy here is supposed to be n minus one plus alpha one. N minus two plus alpha n minus two and z n minus one. Okay, so that's the polynomial, the order. See, this is not up to the order n, right? You know, if you look at the closed loop polynomial characteristic equation, z n plus. Because right now, for this one here, I'm considering a scalar output, which is your what you're gonna deal with. Okay, then your characteristic equation right is this order here is okay yeah so to summarize okay um, your re the reduced order observer is basically Okay, it's basically the equation at here. Okay, so this eta hat, this equation. Once you obtain the eta hat, then you can calculate x b hat. Once you get x b hat, then you can you you will have this so-called error equation. So this this is actually you don't need to do this it's naturally embedded there, and uh, you pick a proper k e right. You would uh, have uh, basically a proper response for the observer system. Okay, yeah. So once you get the observer, then if you recall that your u equal to negative k x of k, right? And k is the pole placement, the other uh, gain that you are trying to obtain. Okay, the closed loop pole uh, here. So then you what you do is you basically you stack them up, right? Okay. You can stack them up like this, okay, then you can get your U. Okay? Yeah. Good. So the whole idea is like this, and uh, you can implement this equation in here, okay? Implement this reduced order observer, and then together with your original system, okay, and the implementation is essentially is going to be uh, look like, okay, it's going to be look like this, okay. So this is in the lecture from the textbook, okay. You will have better uh, drawings, uh, better quality of this. But you see, this top one is your system, okay. Top one the system, and bottom one here, okay, is the observer. 
and the negative kid here is the feedback. So you're designing two things. One is design this guy here. When you design this k, you don't need to consider the observer. You just have to consider what kind of a closed loop response that you want your system to be. Right? You design it based on a certain criteria. And then the KE, right? This is the observer again. So that has to be designed properly such that the observer will respond faster, right? Not too slow. So then you can have a uh, catch up uh, the uh, actual ones quickly. Okay? Yeah. Then this will be uh, uh, making use of uh, the, the estimation information and then for the feedback. All right? Yeah. Okay. So uh, take a look at this one there. Okay. Uh, when you build a simulink diagram, and that's all you all you actually are going to do. So now uh, I'll look give you an example here. This is actually also an example from the textbook. Okay. So if you look at your textbook 452, okay, that's a double integral. Okay. And so the G matrix, okay, for double integral one over S square. We designed a full order for this one in the previous lecture. So here is a reduced order here. So let's say uh, basically for double integral, when you discretize that, your system matrix G is this. So suppose that we're, we're using a t equal to 0 0.2, okay, and h equal to t squared over 2 over t, and 0 0.02 and 0 0.2, okay, yeah. So uh, we design for k, for this k at here, a desired pole. is 0 0.6 plus minus j 0 0.4 and for ke okay ke is the reduced order observer now reduced order observer basically means if you if you look at the system matrix the way we discretize this is the x1 of k is a position and this is a velocity right so we consider, let's say we assume position is measurable, but velocity is not. Okay, and then for the ke, right, it's going to be basically designed for this x2 of k, right, which in our case we call the xb hat. Then ke should be designed. We want it is a deadbeat. Okay, deadbeat response. And if it's a deadbeat response, if you recall that, where do you pl where do we place the pole? at origin, right? Yeah. So that's basically the idea. Okay. Um, when you calculate the K, you can use MATLAB A command or a MATLAB place command using G, H, P, okay, to calculate the K. And the P is basically the desired pole here. Okay, so then you will be able to get this k, right? You'll be able to get a k. Now, for uh, for the ke, okay, for the ke, you would uh, use you can also use Ackman formula, right? You can also use the Ackman formula. Now, for the for the ke, you got to also got to be careful. You look at the ke here. What is the ke? So it depends on this portion here, right? Depends on this portion. GBB, KE, and GAB. Now, however, you know this is not exactly the same as the pole placement. Pole placement is a G minus CK. Okay, so the C is in front of the K. So you know when you use the pole placement, you have a GH. Oh, sorry, there's a uh, sorry, not CK. HK, right? Yeah, for the pole placement. Okay. So you can use the GH and then do that. But now this KE is in front of the GAB. So when you do that, you, uh, if you want to calculate the KE, uh, you actually calculate the KE transpose using Ackman formula. Okay. So this is going to be GBB prime 
and G A B prime and then the P desired. Okay? So this has to be transposed, okay? The G B B transpose. Now what you get is not the K E, what you get is the K E transpose. So then you K E equal to K E transpose transpose. So that's gonna be your K E. You see what I'm saying? Yeah? Okay. So uh, what about the P desire? In this in, in this current case we're we're designing uh, for the uh, dead beat, right? So the P desired here for this example is actually just zero, right? It's just zero because there's only one uh, state. Okay, so there's only basically just one pole at here for this example. Okay, so that'll basically give you uh, this quantity. But okay, so um, if we if you look at the uh, the the exercise there, okay, uh, maybe I'll just uh, do a quick uh, I'll just uh, do a quick one in here. Okay, uh, just see that for this example here, what is the G A B? What is the G A A G A B? GBA and GBB. So you actually don't need to shuffle the state vari vectors because x1 is a position, it's a known, so it's already the first one, right? So you don't need to shuffle it. And the next two is the velocity, which is an unknown, so it's, it's there, right? It's xb. So basically, when you do the partition, right? So that's how you do the partition here. And this is your, your original G matrix. So this GAA is one, GAB is this, GBA is this, GBB is this. Okay, so that's basically what you get, okay? And then your, your, when you calculate your KE, okay, you can hand calculate this for this one very easily. And KE equal to phi, okay, GBB, and then time, because this is a simple system, so GAB trans, uh, inverse, and then times one, and phi A and phi Z equal to Z, right? Equal to the Z. Okay, because there's only order is only n two minus one, so it's just a Z. Okay, because only one state here. So plug this GBB, right? So this term here basically means phi. GBB is just a GBB. So you plug this one here, this can be calculated easily. Uh, this is going to be 5. Okay, so just like that. Is that good? Yeah. And then for the observer, you can plug in into this is the observer here. So you can plug in all the quantities into the observer. Then you get the observer, the eta hat at here. Okay, you get this observer. Okay, you have all the quantity. You can plug it in, and then you get the observer. Uh, in the end, you get it eta hat k plus one equal to negative five y of k plus zero point one and u of k. So, because a lot of things are greatly uh, reduced at here, right? Greatly reduced. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Ready. Um, why is the phi of z equal to z? Because phi of z is a desired polynomial, right? You look at this. Uh, uh, if you look at the uh, this is this is a phi of z. Okay. This is phi of z. And now your your system order is two. There's only one observable. So Z n minus one is one. So Z just one here. Okay. Right? Yeah. There's no other things, right? Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Good. So you can build a, a simulation diagram based on the, the some of the results that are here and also based on this diagram here. So then uh, you will be able to uh, 
Uh, let me see if I have the time here. Uh, a few minutes. So then you can we are do a simulation for this system in here. Okay. Okay, so here's the uh, the diagram, and then I was talking about it here. Okay, so after the uh, some of the manipulations, you, you can replace, you can greatly uh, reduce the uh, um, the complexness of the system here. So if I do a, so what I'm implying, I'm I'm outputting, I'm outputting. Okay, so I'm I guess I'll just up I'm uh, here I'm just uh, it's a regulation problem. So I'm just outputting the system uh response to here. Okay, so there we go. Uh initial condition is one and it's being basically regulated back to zero, right? Okay, so the response is all good. Uh if you're interested, you can also compare Basically, you can also compare the system, uh, whatever you're estimating, right? The estimated quantity, where's the estimated quantity? Uh, estimated quantity out of, uh, is out of here, right? Compare the estimated quantity with the actual ones, okay? See if you're catching it up, basically. All right, yeah. So it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you can build up the uh, similar system, okay, on the uh, experiment setup. So there's another example in the lecture notes. Okay, it's a three by three uh, matrix. So order is a three, and you can take a look at that how it's being manipulated, okay, and how the simulation results will look like. All right. Yeah. So that basically reduced order observer. So any questions? Okay. So project. Um, you should start the project. Uh,